Assalamu alaikum. Today we will start to discuss the anatomy of the anterior and medial aspects of the thigh. Regarding the cutaneous nerve supply to the skin of the anterior thigh, it is derived from the following nerves. First, lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh, which is a branch of lumbar plexus, and it enters the thigh behind the lateral end of the inguinal ligament, supplies the skin over the lateral aspect of thigh and knee, and the skin over the lower lateral quadrant of the gluteal region. Second nerve is genitofemoral nerve, which is a branch of lumbar plexus entering the thigh behind the middle part of the inguinal ligament, supplies small area of the skin of the anterior thigh. Third is ilioinguinal nerve, also it is a branch of lumbar plexus, it enters the thigh through the superficial inguinal ring and it's distributed to the skin over the genitalia both in male and female and supplies small area of skin below the medial part of the inguinal ligament. The fourth nerve is medial cutaneous nerve of thigh which is a branch of femoral nerve supplies the skin over the thigh and on its medial side of the thigh and joins the patellar plexus. The fifth is the intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh. It's also a branch of femoral nerve which will be divided into two branches that supplies the anterior aspect of the thigh and joins patellar plexus. Sixth branch is uh, branches from obturator nerves which supplies a variable area of the skin over the medial aspect of the thigh. Seventh is patellar plexus. This is a plexus of nerve lies in front of the knee and it is formed from branches from lateral and intermediate and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh and the infrapatellar branch of saphenous nerve. What about the superficial veins in the thigh? Superficial veins in the lower limb, in the leg, they are two main venous systems. First lies on the medial side of the lower limb called the great saphenous vein and the other is lying on the lateral side of the lower limb called small saphenous vein. Great saphenous vein drains the medial end of dorsal venous arch in the foot and passes upward in front of the medial malleolus and here it lies in a company with saphenous nerve. In the superficial fascia over the medial side of the leg the vein will passes behind the knee and curves anteriorly around the medial side of the thigh then it passes through a lower part of an opening in the deep fascia of thigh which is called saphenous opening. Finally, it will join the femoral vein about 4 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. 
and this diagram shows course of the great saphenous vein on the medial side of the thigh as it ascend from below up till it reaches to the area of saphenous opening well it will be drained into the femoral vein this is another diagram shows both venous system and the lumbar limb on the medial side is the great saphenous vein on the lateral side is the small saphenous vein great saphenous vein possess numerous valve and is connected to small saphenous vein by one or two branches which will pass behind the knee several perforating veins connecting great saphenous vein with the deep veins along the medial side of the calf at the saphenous opening in the deep fascia the great saphenous vein usually it receive three tributaries which are variable in size and arrangement these tributaries are first superficial circumflex iliac vein second superficial epigastric vein and the third superficial external pudendal vein second venous system in the lower limb is small saphenous vein it arises from lateral part dorsal venous arch of the foot ascends behind the lateral malleolus accompanied with sural nerve it follows the lateral border of achilles tendon and then runs up the middle back of the leg the vein pierces the fascia passes between the two head of gastrocnemius muscle and the lower part of the popliteal fossa it end by drained its to popliteal vein also small saphenous vein has numerous valve along its course second things on the lower limb is the inguinal lymph nodes and the inguinal lymph nodes is mainly two group one is called superficial inguinal lymph node and the other is called deep inguinal lymph nodes the first group superficial inguinal lymph nodes this group lies in the superficial fascia below the inguinal ligament and it is divided into two groups one horizontal group second is vertical group the horizontal group lies just below the inguinal ligament and it lies parallel to that ligament it is divided into two members two main groups or subgroups these are the medial members and the lateral members the medial members of this group receive the lymphatics from the following regions first anterior abdominal wall below the level of the umbilicus and the perineum urethra external genitalia in both sexes 
and the lower half of the anal canal. The second part is the lateral members of this group. They receive the superficial lymphatics from the back below the level of the iliac crest. The vertical group it lies along the terminal part of great saphenous vein. They receive superficial lymphatics from the lower limb. The front lymphatic vessels from superficial inguinal lymph node they will pass through saphenous opening in the deep fascia and they will drain finally into the deep inguinal lymph nodes. This diagram shows the arrangement of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. First group horizontal group, second group vertical group. And as you see the horizontal group it composed of two members lateral group and medial group. Deep inguinal lymph nodes they are located beneath the deep fascia and lies along the medial side of the femoral vein. Efront vessels from these nodes will enter the abdomen passing through femoral canal to the lymph node along the external iliac artery. Superficial fascia of the thigh and this is two type. First type called membranous layer. The second type is called fatty layer. The membranous layer of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall will extend into the thigh and attach to the deep fascia of thigh, which is called the fascia lata, about one finger breadth below the inguinal ligament. Also, the fatty layer of the superficial fascia on the anterior abdominal wall also it will extend into the thigh and will continue downward over the lower limb without interruption. Second type of fascia in the thigh is called deep fascia of the thigh or fascia latte. The fascia of thigh includes the thigh like trouser leg and at its upper end is attached to the pelvis and inguinal ligament. On its lateral aspect the deep fascia will be thickened forming some sorts of what's called iliotibial tract that's attached above to the iliac tubercle and below to the lateral condyle of tibia. The iliotibial tract receive insertion of tensor fascia lata muscle and greater part of the gluteus maximus muscle. In the gluteal region deep fascia will form sheaths which enclose tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus muscle. Saphenous opening. This is a gap in the deep fascia of thigh in front of the thigh just below the inguinal ligament. Its main function is to transmit great saphenous vein branches of femoral artery lymphatic vessels. The saphenous opening situated 4 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle.
In this diagram, you can see this is by greenish in color. This is the deep fascia of thigh or fascia lata. And you can see this gap on the deep fascia, which called saphenous opening. The falciform margin of the saphenous opening is the lower lateral border of the opening and it lies anterior to the femoral vessel. The border of the opening then curves up and medially and finally laterally behind the femoral vessel to be attached to the pectineal line of the superior pubic ramus. Saphenous opening is filled with a loose connective tissue called cribriform fascia. So this is the saphenous opening and this is the falciform border of the saphenous opening as it goes up medially then backward laterally behind femoral vessel. Thank you.